In our Sunrise Smart Start, 17 cars stolen this weekend at the Hertz rental car lot on Ajax Road in the town of Gates. The suspects were caught on camera and authorities are now trying to find them. According to the Gates Police Department, a group of people can be seen cutting the fence to, secure the, to the secure lot. They were somehow able to obtain keys to the rental cars and used a Chevy Suburban to push cars out of the way of the fence. Police tell us the suspects then broke through the fence with the SUV. Some of the missing cars have been recovered. The search for St. John Fisher University students studying abroad in France continues. Kenny Deland Jr. is in his final year at the university, but his family and those he was staying with say they lost contact with him last month. His last known whereabouts, according to a family website, say he made a purchase in the city of Montelamar, but his family says they have not heard from him since November 27th. The community of Clifton Springs remains hopeful for his return. The Libyan man accused of creating the bomb destroying Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, is now in U.S. custody. The flight was traveling from London to New York in 1988 when it exploded and killed 270 people in the plane and on the ground. Among them, students from Syracuse University, SUNY Oswego, Colgate, and a couple from the town of Clay. Abu Aguila Masood has now been charged with two counts related to the explosion. He is the third Libyan intelligence official charged in the U.S. in connection with the attack, but would be the first to appear in an American courtroom for prosecution. State police reminding the public this holiday season that they don't solicit citizens for donations. Troopers have received several calls and complaints from Western New York residents saying people claiming to be affiliated with state police are scamming people and asking for donations. Troopers say if you receive a call like this, the person is definitely not associated or representing state police. One local organization that is centered around putting an end to homelessness is doing their part in helping those in need during the holidays. News H Jatyra Marsh joins us to share what they are doing and how you can help. What can you tell us this morning, Jatyra? The Person-Centered Housing Options is an outreach organization that provides housing first to those who are formerly homeless along with care management services. This holiday season, the organization is focusing on providing those in need with a good holiday by conducting toy drives, providing education to volunteers and church groups, as well as donating socks along with hygiene kits to the homeless. Chief of Development and Community Engagement Nicholas Coulter says it's important to raise awareness to the high rate of homelessness that is continuing to rise in our area. We have a very high um, number of homeless that are on the streets. Um, it's skyrocketing. We're seeing that we have to have more collaboration with the community, business associations, neighborhood associations. We've got to get people supporting the end of homelessness because um, as we see it rising, we've got to take better, better precautions to, to um, reduce homelessness and bring people into housing. Coulter says they are also developing properties to increase the affordable housing stock and getting people off the street. Amel, Casey, back to you. Jatyra, thank you. If you would like to make a donation, you can find more information over on our website, rochesterfirst.com. All right, almost 6.51 right now on your Monday morning. Let's get you ready as you get ready to head out the door this morning. James, how can people prepare before they uh, hit the roads this morning? Yeah, bundle up, I would say. A winter jacket, maybe even the layer underneath. It's chilly out there, and we're not going to see much improvement. We're starting off in the upper 20s, and we will finish in the upper 20s. So it's cold, but, uh, you know, a typical December caliber of cold. Afternoon highs just finishing around 31, so uh, we'll continue to stay below freezing. Mostly cloudy, still could be maybe a random snowflake here and there this morning from what's left over of the system yesterday, but otherwise we'll hold on to those cloudy skies. Eyeing a day in the eight-day forecast that could bring some snow we may need to shovel. I'll point out the day at the end of the show. Casey, ML, back to you. All right, James, thank you. Taking a look at the roads, we are still tracking that accident in Rochester on Smith Street at Vincent Street South. So if you're heading in that direction, just be aware that there may be a little bit of a holdup in the road, but it's not affecting any of the major roadways, including 390, 490, and 590. So if you're heading out the door this morning, you should have no issues. 
Community leaders in Rochester gathering Saturday calling for Congress to expand the child tax credit and earned income tax credit as part of their end of the year federal budget bill. A temporary expansion of the child tax credit in 2021 resulted in a 40% reduction in child poverty nationwide. That's according to the U.S. Census Bureau. They say since it ended, 4 million children have fallen back into poverty. According to the children's agenda, 90% of Monroe County parents support providing tax credits to families with young children. All right, time now to go inside the huddle. The Bills were able to hang on to their number one spot in the AFC as they took down the Jets 20 to 12 yesterday. Even without star pass rusher Von Miller for the rest of the season, the defense still showed up. Thad Brown was in Orchard Park and has more. In the first game after the Bills found out Von Miller would be lost for the season, the defensive line still dominated. Four sacks, two pass breakups, a forced fumble, and enough hits on quarterback Mike White that the Jets' signal caller had to go into an ambulance immediately after the game. None of the players in the locker room were surprised by this production afterward. In fact, they say it's expected, and they have good reason to think so. I'll be telling them boys, like, bro, I mean, they draft y'all for a reason. Y'all got drafted first, second round for a reason. Like, if you think about it, all our DNs either first or second round picks uh, in the past. So, I mean, they drafted them, drafted them, and they bought me back for a reason. So, I feel like we could do it. And, and that's why I just tell them, boys, just have faith. Continue to have faith. There should be no reason of any doubt in our heads of ourselves, whether it's me, Boogie Grig, or Crank Shack. You know, I mean, we should just believe in ourselves, believe in each other, um, and we can do anything. I got three of the dogs out there with me rushing. So, I mean, it's it's really our mentality is kind of like four equals one. You know, like I can win on one side, somebody else can win, then if somebody else isn't doing their job, then the quarterback just gets flushed out and runs away. So, it's four equals one every single play we make. We've been losing superstars since the beginning of the season, so it's just a standard that we got throughout our throughout our um, our our program, you know, and next man up mentality. It goes across the board, man. The D line did a good job of, you know, stepping up, and uh, I mean that's what that's what get this thing going for us, man. Because you know the game is one up front, and those guys definitely stepped up and played big. That's what they supposed to do, you know. Greg had a two piece, you know. AJ, I think AJ had one, maybe TFL or something. That was supposed to happen. That what we supposed to do. That's how we supposed to dominate the game. That's how we supposed to hit the quarterback. You know what I'm mean? saying? Mm -hmm. uh, when you when you start hitting them, you don't stop. You just keep hitting them. This game was a bit personal for Shaq Lawson, who played for the Jets last year, but was cut just before the game at the end of the season against the Bills. When he got a second half sack, he said he ran up and down the field about 80 yards, celebrating, adding, "Quote, I wanted them to hear me and feel me." Inside the Buffalo huddle. At Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, I'm Thad Brown. Thad, thank you. And while the defense shined, the offense did just about the opposite. Josh Allen starting the game with just 16 yards in the first quarter. He also finished with under 150 yards. The Bills now prepare to face off against the Dolphins. That game is on Saturday night. Okay, one more check of the forecast now with James. 12-12, kind of a lucky day maybe? Yeah, right. Uh, lucky day today. No fights on the bus today. Right? No, no. <laughs> After what we just watched. Yourself. Yes, yes, exactly. Let's just get to school. At least okay? maybe they have on mittens or gloves. <laughs> maybe true. only a softer mitt. Right. Yeah, no hockey sticks. 30 yeah. degrees for an afternoon high temperature. Maybe it's 31, 32 degrees, but that's about it. We're keeping an eye to the end of the week. You take your eyes to Thursday and Friday. Maybe that overnight time frame could see some accumulating snow. We'll talk about it all week long. Stay with us. All right, James, thank you, and thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. That's all the time we have this morning. Our next update is in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great Monday, everybody. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.